cultivating creative confidence while in the right place. How do you do it? How can you build on it to have that unshakable belief in your ability to solve any problem? And I believe it's a skill and it's an ability. It's not something that you're born with necessarily. It's something that you can actually cultivate. And once you master it, you're well on your way to having a meaningful and fulfilled life where anything is possible. I really believe that. I have a confession, and if you guys haven't figured it out already, I am an introvert, and I would describe myself as an extreme introvert. And public speaking is a big challenge for me. And this is something I've been working on for most of my adult life. And I say in adult life, but I've been working on all my life, but I just didn't have the tools to work on it earlier. I've hired coaches, read books, and watched too many videos to count. And the fact that I'm standing here is evidence that if you work at something that you're afraid of, you too can overcome it. As an extreme introvert, I had issues with making eye contact, of even just talking. When you're around people and places and environments that are foreign to you, where you feel out of character and you start to act a little squirrely, that's the first sign that you're behaving in a way that's not in keeping with yourself. I got the pleasure of meeting Sugar Ray Leonard, who is a legend and we're sitting in my office. I just told him right at the beginning of the meeting, do I call you Ray Sugar, Sugar Ray, Mr. Leonard, how do I call you? And he said to me, just call me Ray. I've tried to get my wife to call me Sugar Ray for 20 years, it's not worked. You can call me Ray. I said, I have to let you know something before we start the meeting. This is just me in my full transparency mode, just being true to who I am. I told him, I grew up watching your fights with my father. We didn't do a whole lot of things together. We didn't know how to relate, but we could relate about boxing. And we would just marvel at your skill, your technique. And if my voice cracks during the meeting, it's just because I'm a fan. And he was the best. And the, the conversation has been totally different. Like once I got that out of the room, he, uh, he signed these gloves for me to my kid. And he just did the most wonderful thing. He's like to my little champ, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. It was awesome. Then we took pictures together and selfies and just, we did the whole nose to nose thing, it was awesome. And I gotta tell you, I've had a couple of meetings with Sugar Ray Leonard. And every once in a while, he messaged me on LinkedIn just to say happy Easter or something. I gotta tell you, that's really super cool. And I have to think of it this way. Had I not been true to myself, I would not be able to relate to him in any real meaningful way. And we have the best of relationships in terms of a client vendor relationship now and i love it okay so confidence what is confidence how are you going to find more of it so there's this quote by brian tracy you are not what you think you are but what you think you are and the first thing that we need to do in finding our confidence is to kind of search for peace peace of mind inner peace okay and if you can have that that's the beginning that's what you should strive for and in other words, less complicated words, just to be happy. This is my formula for happiness. It's when what you think, what you say and what you do are in perfect harmony. Parts of the, the unhappiness comes from attachment. Attachment to knowledge, power, wealth, whatever it is that you think. And another word for that is ego, your sense of self-esteem or self-importance. So it's the part of the mind that uh, mediates between the conscious and unconscious self, right? So when who you are inside doesn't match who you are outside, your ego is the, the thing that's pushing those two parts away from each other. So one, another way to look at it is this gap. The ego exists in the gap between your conscious and your unconscious mind. Uh, Ira Glass talks about this. I'm sure you guys have seen it. He's the host of This American Life. And so there's the you of today. And there's the future you. And he talks about how you as in the future have great taste and you're capable of doing so many things. But the you of today, you lack the skills, the techniques, the words, the confidence. And so the ego is pushing those two things apart. A lot of people describe this and they ask me, how do you get over the whole imposter syndrome? Does anybody here, have, have you ever used those words to describe yourself? Or you think of yourself that way? So the imposter syndrome, okay. There's the real you and there's the mask you wear. And whenever I meet students or people who want a little coaching on how to become more confident, they think that the world sees the mask that you wear for yourself. But because it's in your unconscious mind, this future you, nobody actually knows that. 
So the truth is, they're already seeing you for who you are. If I'm the weird, awkward fanboy of Sugar Ray Leonard, he already sees that. Me pretending not to be that is only gonna mess me up. Where you feel stressed and you start behaving strangely. Okay? So we, we assume that people are not as smart as they are. They truly already see you for who you are and they're either going to accept you or not accept you. And you shouldn't care either way, okay? Imposter syndrome. So how do you stop feeling like an imposter? Okay, we talked about it. It's detachment. You gotta let go. You have to surrender. You have to be true and honest and authentic to who you are. And the irony of it all is, when you relinquish authority, you actually gain it. When you relinquish power, you gain it. There's a pattern here. You relinquish influence, you gain it. 